Hi, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Computer Science Virtual Opening virtual open evening presentation. I'm going to pass you over to Alex Parry, who is going to take us through this presentation tonight. Good evening, everybody. Um, so we're going to start by looking at uh, why you might want to study computer science at Hills Road Sixth Form. Um, so computer science uh, gives you a, a great opportunity to learn um, lots of things about digital systems, and that's very um, sort of apparent, really, in in our daily world. Um, so looking at things like logic, uh, rigor and problem solving, and these skills are really useful, not just for computer science, uh, but also in lots of other subjects, uh, jobs, and just your general life. Um, and as a computer science, you are gonna be looking at how you can apply these skills. Uh, so part of it's gonna be through developing programs. And the other side is actually understanding how computer systems work. Um, and how you can build uh, more efficient machines as well. The programming language that we use is C Sharp. Um, and this is one of the most popular languages um, currently in the world. And it's used for many things such as uh, websites, uh, applications on your PC, on your phone, um, and lots of other domains. So I thought this was a really nice quote, just summing up um, programming, which is the one side of computer science. Um, programming is the only job I can think of where I get to be both an art, uh, an engineer and an artist. I think it's a really nice summary of uh, what you can do as a programmer, um, as well as creating developing systems. You're also being very free and uh, experimental in, in some of these things. So the course um, covers quite a few different areas. Some of it is uh, programming related and other areas is non-programming. So over the two years, uh, these are some of the topics that you might look into, uh, that you will look into. So software engineering, how we can uh, create software, how we can maintain software. Uh, algorithms and data structures, so how you can develop algorithms and uh, store data in different ways uh, during your programs. Uh, how computers are built and the architecture behind that. Things like networking and communication. So actually, how do you things, um, how do devices communicate over things like the internet and smaller networks as well? And databases is quite an important topic as well, because we cover things like how to store data, manipulate data, um, so it's in a, a permanent format. And big data as well, sort of relates a little bit to databases. Um, but it's actually more, a, I'd say, a, a sort of social side of things, so the data that collected uh, about people. And it relates to things as well, like artificial intelligence and machine learning. So some of the skills that you gain uh, throughout the course are analytical skills. So how can you analyze uh, problems, uh, finding solutions to problems as well. Um, your creativity as well, like I said before, programming especially is such a creative um, domain. So being able to use your skills and, and think of uh, novel approaches to solving a problem, how you can use things like critical thinking. So how you can analyze a problem and try and take the best approach or perhaps stop if your approach isn't working and rethink a solution to a problem. And resilience, um, which is especially with things like programming, it really builds up your resilience uh, when you're trying different ways to solve a problem before you get to uh, an optimum solution. And your programming, you'll look at things like procedural programming. So if you've done any programming before, um, this is the program that you're probably more used to. So how to uh, create sync sequences of code and things like functions. Also look at event-driven and object-oriented programming. So that's a bit more advanced and something, uh, if you have studied at GCSE, that you won't have uh, touched upon in uh, the GCSE level. So we support, support our students in lots of different ways. Um, our staff is made up of uh, experienced specialist computer science staff, uh, and we've all had experience in industry uh, as well as teaching computer science. So it's a really good way for us to um, be able to explain and give our insights as well into how these things apply out in the real world. We run workshops um, so students can attend. Uh, they're free to attend uh, when they uh, want to, to practice more topics and get extra support. 
um, and we can also be available for one-to-one -one support. There's also some mentoring from a, a site called Isaac Computer Science. Uh, the team's actually based in Cambridge, um, and at the moment they're running online student mentoring um, that's throughout the year, it touches on different topics, and these are all hosted by some of their expert teachers. You'll be assessed uh, during year 13, uh, so your second year of A-level, and there's two papers. Um, one of them is worth 40% and it's an on-screen exam. So if you have studied GCSE computer science, um, you may be geared up to doing a written exam, but what you won't have done is actually um, performed an exam on the computers. And that's partly made up of a programming exercise where you're given the program, uh, the code beforehand, and you'll be asked some questions and develop some programs around that. And some of it will be on the sort of theoretical knowledge of um, how you create programs and algorithms. The paper two is a written exam. So that's a mixture of short answer and extended questions. And quite often these will be around um, how computers work, but there might also be something around algorithms and programming within there. And the last bit of the assessment is the non-examed assessment. So this is a, actually a programming project. It's worth 20%. So it's essentially a piece of coursework. And uh, we'll do that over uh, a quite a few months in year 13. And it's a really good way for you to show your, uh, your skills in programming and uh, document and test things uh, really thoroughly. So we have lots of extracurricular activities as well and they're available through computer science, um, some of which we do in college and some of them are outside of college. So some of the clubs um, that we've got include a robotics club, a computer science society um, and esports. And there's also lots of events uh, during the year. So one of them is the uh, Bebras com com uh, Computing Challenge. So this is a widely recognized challenge and we've had students before who have gone on to the finals. Um, there's also competitions from Raspberry Pi as well, who are local to Cambridge, and there's opportunities for work placements. Um, so one of the companies that we worked with last year is called Andev, again, an, a local company um, who will let you, you know, experience the world of programming through a, a, a real life company. So we've had some really good student performance um, over the last couple of years. Uh, our national rates are 98% who get an A star to E, and that's above the national pass rate. And our high grades uh, between A star and B are um, actually well above the national average at 58%. So we get some really strong results from computer science. And quite a lot of our students go on to study different things. Um, so a fair amount of them go on to higher education, uh, studying degrees in things like information security, games engineering. Um, aerospace engineering as well, it's quite cool. Um, there's uh, uh, quite a few go into employment as well and apprenticeships, and there's actually an increase of degree-based apprenticeships uh, nowadays, so you can uh, work for a company, but they'll also uh, support you in gaining a degree at the same time. So we're just going to chat to uh, two of our computer science um, year 13s, and they're going to tell you about their experience of computer science at Hills Road. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Rowan, I'm a year 13 and I run the Computer Science Society as well at Hills. In terms of why I really like doing computer science, um, the main reason is the problem solving. Like Sir was saying, there's lots of different ways to solve a problem, you can get really creative with it. Quite often when you're working in class, you'll say, right, here's the problem, split up into groups, have a look at it, and some one person will come up with one way, one person will come up with another way, and then you can discuss like, what's better, what's worse, and or, or even if they're the same and it's just different advantages in different situations. Um, I also date maths, so I like the sort of math mathematical, logical side of things. Uh, we do uh, Boolean algebra, a little bit of cryptography and set theory, which I've really enjoyed. Uh, lots of people in the chat were asking about uh, GCSE computer science. I, I did GCSE. Um, and it's sort of, A-level is, um, a lot of what you've done, like the topics wise, but in a lot more detail. And we don't cover too many of the sort of logical, mathematical, like fundamentals of computer science at GCSE. 
whereas like obviously if we do and um a lot of people are asking you know is it a problem if i haven't done gcse the answer is no uh there's lots of people in in the class that haven't done gcse so it's not a requirement sort of progression wise uh if you're thinking about a career in like the tech industry and obviously this is a great course but even if you decide that that's like not for you then the the problem skill solving skills that you learned will be pretty much useful in like anything you do so still gonna come in really handy um i just want to talk very briefly as well about the computer science society so at hills um loads of the different uh subjects will have their own society and there are a bunch of others as well um and normally we would meet sort of once a week and have a sort of chat about what's going on in the tech world and we do some competitions and we get speakers in and things and in lockdown we've been running a little online competition so that might be something you're also interested in if you, you like cs i'm going to hand over to the other student speaker hi everybody my name's james i am an upper six student taking computer science at hills I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about the commercial opportunities presented by Hills in terms of computer science. So in addition to the outstanding course that Hills has, um, they also present the chance to experience real world work experience in the IT sector. So Hills has presented last year at the end of last academic year, it was presented the opportunity to work with the local software development company and dev over the summer. And this was with four, well, three other students. And we got to work together for real clients on real world projects throughout the summer. This built on skills we learn at Hills like C-sharp programming, as well as introducing new ones, such as how to interact with new clients and um, use enterprise solutions like Microsoft Azure. I really enjoyed the academic experience at Hills. It's challenging and stretching. And this combined with the opportunities presented in real life IT companies in our local environment, because this is a local company to Cambridge that we got the opportunity to work with. Um, it really benefits you in a lot of ways in addition to just academically. Additionally, I am involved in the Robotics Club, which is a enrichment and society at Hills. And that's a lot of fun as well. So you get to build robots with other students. So code those from a lot of different levels and you get to learn new skills there that also might be of interest to you if you're interested in computer science. Uh, thank you. So we've got some time now for uh, Q&A. So any questions and answers? Uh, if by the end of the evening I haven't managed or we haven't managed to answer all of your questions, we will uh, archive those remaining questions and get back to you with answers to those questions. So please don't worry if we don't manage to get through everything. So uh, first question, we've got a really good question here from uh, Juliet, and it says, how easy is it to switch from using Python to using c -sharp? So obviously Python is quite a commonly used language at uh, GCSC and here at hills we program in c sharp so i'm going to go to rowan for this one how did you find did you have to switch from python uh yeah i, I was using python at, at gcse level in terms of sort of structuring your programming it's a, exactly the same but of, in terms of the actual syntax of the language then obviously they're two quite different um, but don't worry about that because when you start at Hills, you sort of start from the very beginning um, and we, we go right from the start learning C-sharp. I didn't really know any C-sharp and, you know, I'm a lot more confident with it now. So, um, so yeah, no, is the, is the answer. It's, it's a nice, easy process. Brilliant. James, do you have anything to add? I mean, what was your experience at GCSE? I also did Python at GCSE. Um but I had learned C sharp in my own time. I would say that it may be beneficial to do some outside, but I don't think you really need to do that prior to starting the course if that's what you're worried about, because while it's helpful to practice, it's, as Rome was saying, it's just syntax that's different. Um, programming in general is quite similar from language to language. 
Yeah, and, and obviously we do have a number of students who are possibly a little bit worried about that and thinking they need to get ahead, uh, start on learning. <laughs> <clears throat> sorry, on learning C sharp before they come to Hills. Um, and that's not necessary. Uh, as part of your summer work, we will give you a little bit of an introduction there. One of the tasks will be to start looking at some of the C sharp and, and maybe prepping, getting prepped with the IDE. Uh, but your teachers are there to guide you through and to teach you. Uh, the intricacies of uh, learning C sharp. I mean, Alex, how do you, what, what would you add to that? Yeah, I mean, I, I really agree with what Bernie and James said that um, I think when you, sometimes if you look at a C sharp program, it looks more different than um, you initially sort of um, anticipate coming from something like Python, but generally the transition is quite smooth and actually if you've already learned one programming language then learning another is much quicker and much easier um, so you know it's like learning something like French and then learning German if you've learned one language it's much easier than learning another language um, but I'd say even even more so with something like C-sharp because there's so many um, similarities between what you'd use in Python. Okay so hopefully that James has answered some of your questions and for yours was quite a pretty similar question to that. Do you need already need to have had some C sharp? Uh, now I've got a question from Joseph said, how strongly would maths be recommended to take alongside computer science? So let's just ask our students, what other subjects do they take uh, with uh, computer science? I mean, I, I do do maths, I do double maths um, and I also do film studies. So um, lots of people are asking like recommended subjects it's obviously good to do like related STEM subjects, but it's, it's not required. I do another creative subject. Right, James, what about you? I take double maths and physics in addition to computer science. I would say it's not, in my experience in the computer science course, I don't think it's required that you take math in addition to it. I don't think it's vital. It might be helpful in some situations, but- There's, there's quite a lot of crossover um, in some of the topics. With, with maths, but, and so it's, it's helpful if you have that, it's like a head start, but we relearn everything that, that you need. And, and obviously uh, you do have a number of students uh, who take computer science who do that without maths. Uh, and as Rowan said, one of the nice things about Hills is because we are a large sixth form college, we can offer uh, students all sorts of mix of topics so obviously we've got somebody like James who takes a classic combination double maths physics computer science whereas Rowan you've gone slightly to one side and, and added a more creative subject in there and, and one of the advantages of a big college like Hills is you can do that. We have a small minority of student teacher that don't uh, study maths along uh, computer science I mean it's very would you say that is an issue for those students? No, I don't think so. Um, I think the the level of maths that you need to know for computer science is never going to be the the level that you would need if you are studying um, maths or, or double maths. As, as Rowan said, you know it can help in certain situations. But if you have to learn something mathematical for computer science, is you will learn the whole concept during the course. Um, and it's not going to be at the level that you would if you were studying mathematics as, as a subject uh, at A-level. Um, so I, I don't think it's a requirement at all. Um, and actually, there's a lot of other subjects that complement computer science really nicely. Um, I thought, you know, especially with, with Rowan's example of film studies and the, if you think about the creativity of programming as well, um, you know, there's lots of opportunities to sort of mix and match with whatever choices you want to make. Uh, so now I've got a question from Juliet uh, about how big is an average computer science class at Hills Road? Uh, your 12s currently are averaging at about a class size of 24. Your 13s, I would say a little bit less than that. But, you know, sort of between 20 and 24 students. We don't take more than 24 in a class. Obviously, we've got physical limitations, as you can see behind uh, Mr. Perry there. We've got lots of computers all banked up there uh, in the room. So that room, I believe, has got 24 
computers in it plus teachers computer so there is a physical limitation as well jay so what subjects do you suggest taking with computer science well uh, as students have uh, already shown you've got your classic combination like james so double maths physics and computer science but it is also possible at a large school like hills to take other complementary subjects such as film studies or and i think i believe this was somebody mentioned uh, music tech uh, further down as well so i think the advantage of a college like hills is that you have a freedom of subject combinations you wouldn't necessarily get in a smaller sixth form uh, environment uh, i guess my advice would be to you is think about beyond hills where you might like your future to go and think about what subjects or topics might be useful for what you aspire to do okay james what, what would you what advice would you give to anybody uh, deciding on choices for a level at this stage um i would say it's mostly whatever you want to do but the important point to make is that if you're already thinking about university courses which is a long way off but it you know, when you're taking your A-level courses, it's something you should start considering, I think. For instance, a lot of the university A-level or no, university computer science courses require you to take math at A-level. So that's something you might want to consider. But other than that, whatever interests you, I would say. Yeah, that is that is a very good point. If you want to study computer science at university, quite often they don't even ask for computer science. They just ask for maths. So, yeah, just think about that. Yeah, it's the entry requirement. It's starting to change now. It's taken them quite a while. But more are, some of them are saying you could either study computer science or mathematics. Um, but yeah, it's really good to be aware of when you are thinking ahead to university, if that is something you're interested in. Yeah, definitely. So if, you know, if you do have an idea of what you want to go, look ahead at requirements uh, as to what the university wants. But otherwise, if you're not sure, go with something that interests you. So in terms of entry requirements uh, for computer science, is that a seven, I believe, or is it a six? Uh, I'm going to go with a six, but it's, as I say, the computer science it is not a requirement for entry to do computer science at Hills. The main criteria would be the maths, which would be the seven. Uh, rather than the GCSE. So we do accept students who do not have computer science. Uh, some students come from, say, smaller schools where it's not an option for them to study computer science. Uh, so we don't uh, preclude those students from studying with us. So I think the important will be that maths, uh, which would be a seven. Emily then says, relating to that, I didn't take computer science at GCC. Will I be at a large disadvantage? I would say no. We do have a number of students that don't take computer science. It depends on what you do, I guess, in your spare time. Are you an avid programmer? Are you interested in that programming side uh, beyond what would be a GCSE? Uh, Mr. Parry, have you got any comments about not having GCSE? Um, no, I, mean, I, I agree with you um, as well that it's if you're interested in the subject, um, if you're interested in programming, if you're interested in, in how computers work and, and learning about that, then that's really going to be the thing that, that motivates you and to study the subject and, and to do well. So it's, you know, it's not a requirement to study at GCSE. And when we do cover um, concepts, we will quite often do a sort of small recap that's more GCSE level before moving on to the A-level content. Um, and that way, no one really gets left behind. Um, and like I said in, in the presentation, we have workshops, there's other opportunities uh, for you to receive sort of extra support if you feel you need it. But quite often, students that haven't studied GCSE computer science um, have done just fine. So now we're coming on to a few sort of course content-based questions. So I'm going to pose it, pass these on to Alex, but do we cover any quantum computing? Sadly not. Um, quantum computing is a, a very new field that 
it's still, I'd say, mainly in the theoretical stage. There is a few, um, a few sort of real life applications of it, um, but no, not yet. It's not in the curriculum. Um, it's not to say that it couldn't be in the curriculum at some point, um, but we will look at things around the sort of social, ethical um, side of computer science as well. So it might be a topic that comes up in that in, in you know, how could quantum computing change computing um, for, you know, normal people or if it was uh, used in sort of developing countries, how that might influence it. So it could be a topic that comes up, but it's not a strict topic of the computer science A-level. Uh, this one's probably a question for the students as this is coming up for them. So what kind of projects have people built for the 20% coursework? So I'm gonna ask James and Rowan, have you had any ideas or what sort of ideas are you coming up with for your projects? So we've only just submitted our project proposals because I think it was a bit delayed because of COVID. But um, yeah, so currently I'm the project I put forward anyway was to make a contact tracing system that would use various cryptography techniques to stay secure and private. Um, one of my friends who was at Hills last year, he made a kind of traffic, um, I don't know how to describe it, routing system, but you're encouraged to make projects that have a real user that you can actually ask for details and things like that. So it's designed to be something useful. And Rowan, what about you? So my project proposal um, is an application, I'm thinking, of building. Um, I, it's like a, a health app for a health condition called ME or CFS. There are sort of two types of projects that you could do. You could either do a project to solve a problem or an investigation. And I think there's, there's like a, I'm sure there's on the website, on the computer science website, there's a, there's a list of example ones, but there's like some people have built um, like a Rubik's Cube simulator. There was like lots of shop databases that people have done. I'm sure Sir knows a lot more of the, the previous one, so that's off the top of my head. But you can sort of do whatever you like, to be honest, within reason. Yeah, Mr. Parry, what, what's, what's, can you give us a flavour of some of the projects? There's been, well, just, I'd say a huge variety, to be honest. There isn't, one of the main things, if it's something you're interested in, then you're more likely to put in, you know, the effort and, and, and sort of really fly with it. Um, I had a student last year who created a food ordering system. So it was, you know, the ability to order um, food for a restaurant and actually book a, a place. Um, but it used algorithms to uh, do recommendations as well. So what kind of meals they might like or what restaurants were nearby uh, based on the location. There's other systems where you're more using, um, sort of, I'd say, like advanced algorithms. So James' uh, example is his friend was um, quite a common one of, of trying to find the shortest path. So that could be from one location to another. That could be in like a simulation as well. Um, so getting um, position from one place to another. It could be with, within a game. Um, so, you know, trying to create uh, computer AI that can, you know, find the quickest route from one place to the player. Um, so there's there's loads of different applications. The, the main thing is trying to find something that's not going to be too excessive for an A-level project, but you can still get really good marks in. Um, and that's why we'll, when you discuss your projects with us, um, with the teachers, then we will really sort of help you pinpoint um, what is the problem you're trying to solve and uh, what might be some really good things to include uh, within your project so you get a good mark without it being too complex. So just taking another look through the list, so Hannah Clark, uh, how much experience in programming do you need coming into the course? Obviously, GCSE is not a requirement. Uh, obviously, some knowledge of coding, but uh, you know we teach uh, the coding aspects of the course again from scratch. Okay, so we have a vast range of students who come in with varying different knowledge of programming prior to starting the course. And I think that is initially one of the big challenges. We come from those who students who have very little programming knowledge to students who have very advanced programming knowledge. And it, it's 
one of the skills of our teachers is then meeting the needs of all of those uh, who are starting the course and, and offering support. Uh, Rosalind, uh, um, are there a similar number of girls and boys who take computer science at A level? So Rowan, what's your experience of this? I'll be honest, the ratio of boys to girls is, um, but it could be better. I would really like to see like a lot of next year's, a lot more girls, please. Um, in my class, I believe there's five girls to about like 18 or so boys. So, you know, more girls, please. Thank you. Yeah. I mean, do you find that a hindrance in the classroom? How do you find that from your perspective? No, I, I don't think it's, I, it's not a problem. <laughs> I've never really, really noticed a, yeah. you know, an imbalance. Yeah, but it would be nice just to have a few more. Nice. So don't don't let uh, the low numbers put you off. Let's have more of you here so we can make up those numbers. Exactly. Right, and even out the balance is what I would say to that. Just to say for this year's year 12 that have just joined, um, there was quite a noticeable increase in the number of girls studying as well. So I think in some classes we have uh, around sort of eight girls to um, maybe 16 boys, so that the gap is closing. Uh, how much of the course includes theory and how much of it is uh, practice? Um, it's a really difficult question to answer. Um, when you look at the two papers, there's one paper that is more on programming, although you do have to answer questions about algorithms um, as well. Uh, so that could be written answers, uh, explaining things as well as um, as creating algorithms. And then the theory paper, um, but again, you might have some questions that are related to, uh, so SQL, like a language used for creating databases. I'd say, honestly, a lot of the theory that we cover, you will have some way of then applying that uh, in a practical sense, so either by creating a program or creating an algorithm or um, maybe even a simulation. So I think at GCSE, it's more strict, I'd say, between the this is a theory and this is the programming. Um, at A level, you get to actually see so things like encryption, which is a, you know, it's a theoretical topic, but then you actually apply uh, and create your own algorithms to encrypt and decrypt messages uh, through programming. So I think you get a lot more of a mix at A-level. Uh, and IDA, so which IDE do we use for the C-sharp code? And I believe somebody else asked uh, later on, which kind of goes hand in hand with that, about what platform is uh, best for running or do we need to run programming off? So we might as well answer both of those together. So um, I'm guessing Visual Studio then for the C Sharp uh, uh, IDE as part of that, which is freely downloadable. Okay, and runs, I guess, on all major platforms. Mm -hmm. yeah. Up. So, yeah. yeah, Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, Raspberry Pi if you want it to. So yeah, not an issue with those. And I think part of the summer work would be uh, downloading that environment in preparation for starting with Hills. Quick note about the IDE is we, we use Visual Studio and all of the, um, the computers in college. Um, if you find another IDE that you actually prefer um, that, that would run C Sharp, so some people quite like uh, an IDE called Atom, for example, then you're, you know, you're, it's up to you what IDE you use, if you wanted to use it on your laptop, your home uh, computer. Um, but if you're using the computers in college, then it will be Visual Studio. Elliot there has asked, um, is game development part of computer science at Hills Road? I'm guessing the answer to that is probably no. However, as part of your course here, you know, you do the EPQ project. So that would make a fantastic EPQ, you know, so there's nothing to stop you extending your knowledge of programming and, and branching out uh, as part of your EPQ. Uh, and that is the sort of thing lots of students would do. So that is something that you could then extend yourself as part of that. Sorry, can I just expand on that a little bit? So yeah. C Sharp, which is the language we learn at Hills, is actually used in 
the Unity engine, which is a common game engine. So if you were interested in game development, the course would enable you to do that. Next one, any trips? Are there any trips on the course? Um, usually, yes. Uh, obviously, we, we're living through slightly different times at the moment. Um, but yes, usually there would be trips that we had arranged. So some of them might be um, more local to places like the um, Computer uh, Science Museum. There might be other trips as well that are a bit further. So I know, in, I think in the past, we've done uh, Bletchley, which is where the, uh, the uh, code breakers were during the Second World War. Um, so yes, when things are back to normal, which will hopefully be soon, then there'll be um, opportunities outside of the course to experience computer science as well. And Bobby's asked, how many lessons are there every week? So in a normal uh, non-COVID uh, timetable, you would uh, receive four 65-minute lessons over the week, uh, two with one teacher and two with a second subject teacher. In the COVID environment, the current learning environment that we're in, those are two-hour lessons. So, and we're alternating from one week in school and then to one week uh, in an online environment. Uh, so, in your on in your face-to-face -face, uh, lessons, you would have two two-hour lessons uh, with two different teachers. Then the following week, you would have two two-hour lessons uh, online through the Teams environment that we use there. Uh, what science board is used for a, uh, computer science? That is the AQA board. So we are studying AQA. Uh, are students allowed to bring in their own computers? I would say yes, they're positively encouraged to bring in their own computers. Okay, uh, James Rowan, do either of you bring in your own uh, machines for lessons? I, I don't actually, I don't bring in my laptop, but um, I have a friend that does and um, uses it for everything in lessons. Yeah, I, I bring in my laptop, and especially right now with COVID, that's nice. Um, and it's also nice to just have your own machine where you know what's going on on it. Um, yeah, you're allowed to use it in lessons for note taking. Some teachers are allowed in note taking, and for just programming in general. Brilliant. So yeah, no, we definitely encourage you to bring your own machine. As I say, it's, as James said, it's a familiar environment uh, that you're used to as well. Do you make GUIs or websites using C Sharp? Anybody, any of you guys had any experience of making GUIs or websites? Or oh, maybe something you do as part of your NEA? You do, um, you make some GUIs within the computer science courses, C Sharp WinForms and web dev can be done with C Sharp. There are a couple of projects such as Blazor that do that. Um, I'm sure there's other ones too. So you can do that. That's web development. I don't know if that's within the course, but. Um, no, I mean, it could be as part of an NEA. Um, you can use uh, ASP.NET, which is the Microsoft framework, um, runs on their servers, and that's uh, one of the most popular frameworks on the web. Um, so yeah, you can definitely do stuff for, for both of them in C Sharp. But, um, so we've got a question there from Samuel. Do you cover development methodologies used in industries such as um, Agile? Also, do you cover mobile languages such as um, the Kotlin and Swift? So we will look at um, some different methodologies, uh, including Agile, um, which is you know, used uh, quite prominently in, in industry. Um, we don't actually look at mobile application within the course at the moment. Um, but that's not to say if you wanted to do it for the NEA or the um, EP, EPQ project, uh, you could look into doing a, a mobile application for that and using uh, whatever language you like. Uh, do you study Cyberstart or RoboCup? Uh, we, well, Hills Robotics runs their own one called Robocon, and then they enter to one run by Southampton University called Student Robotics. I haven't heard anything in relation to the cybersecurity course they were mentioning but so unfortunately we're now coming to the end of our session so any questions that we haven't been able to answer for you we will uh, get back to you in due course 
uh, and send you answers to those remaining questions. So thank you all for joining us tonight. Uh, and we we'll look forward to seeing some of you uh, or many of you next year uh, as uh, year 12 students at Hills Road. I'd like to say thank you to Alex, uh, James and Rowan for their time with us tonight. Okay, great. Thank you. Have a good evening.